All right. Uh, well, it's uh, 5.30. Uh, so uh, thank you, everyone, for, for joining us uh, this evening. It's uh, We're here to talk about a, uh, it's the public meeting for, to talk about Fifth Avenue and Grand Avenue in downtown Des Moines. Uh, and uh, this includes a one-way to two-way conversion, as well as a number of other improvements to improve the overall street for, uh, for all our users of the street. Uh, and we uh, Appreciate everyone joining us uh, virtually here. Uh, as we're still uh, virtually, we've seen some some benefits for people able to able to join remotely, and and we also are able to. So if there are folks, uh, the recording uh, can be placed on our on our website. So, um, and so, uh, um, so again, thank you everyone. For uh, as we talk about, uh, we are um, doing this virtual. Let's see. Corey, I don't know if you're able to, to switch to the next slide or if you'd like me to, to, to share my screen. Yep, I can switch to the next slide. Okay, thank you, thank you. All right, so um, again, holding the meeting virtually, uh, that you know, this is uh, Zoom. And so I ask that uh, Corey and I will, will give a presentation of uh, what, uh, what our plan is and the concepts developed for Fifth Avenue and, and Grand Avenue. And, uh, and so, at, you know, as we, uh, at the end of the pre presentation, we will have an opportunity for uh, folks to uh, speak comments or ask questions. And uh, we ask that in order to uh, operate the meeting uh, orderly, that you raise your hand. And if you can see, uh, hopefully you see a menu bar, like the one that's shown on the screen there. If you click on participants, that should give you the option to, uh, to, to raise your hand. Uh, if you're on a phone and calling in on a phone, uh, you, we ask that you pr uh, press star nine uh, to raise your hand and un to unmute yourself, you press star six. Uh, and again, this meeting is recorded. So if there are folks who that you're aware of that are unable to attend the meeting, uh, then uh, we, uh, uh, the, this, this meeting can be, will be recorded and can be posted on the city's website. So, so again, please, uh, uh, like I said, Corey and I will give a presentation overview of the project. And then uh, if you look on that menu bar there, when you click on participants, we ask that you raise your hand and Corey and I will uh, will call on you. And that way we uh, give you an opportunity to speak and, and ask questions. So, all right, Corey, if you can go to the next slide. So again, this is a, a public meeting. Uh, we, we like to hold these uh, early on in our, our process uh, before we start uh, detailed design. Uh, that's that you know we we want to have a, a, a concept of what we want to do so that way I uh, can give uh, uh, you know our folks uh, in the public to uh, something to view and, and look at uh, but we don't want to be uh, obviously far enough along detailed design with construction drawings and figuring out the grades and the exact uh, line work uh, to the point you know in case something changes based on the feedback we received tonight or uh, or, or as we start the pro design process. So uh, again, we, we, in the past, we mostly hold in-person meetings, uh, but you know, due to the pandemic, we're, we're holding these virtual. And again, I think these have, have shown some advantages to allow people to, to join remotely. And so, uh, so I appreciate you all with your patience and joining us in Zoom uh, this evening. Uh, this is uh, the opportunity to comment and ask questions about this project. So again, we'll give a presentation and then we, we ask that you, if you have any comments, questions, uh, please raise your hand and, 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 and ask them. Because so we have a number of city staff uh, from our traffic and transportation department 
on with us. And I also even see, uh, I see uh, some of our council members, council members uh, Carl Voss and uh, council member uh, Josh Mandelbaum uh, joining us this evening. Uh, so thank you. So we're here to talk about Fifth Avenue uh, between Cherry Street and Grand Avenue downtown, as well as Grand Avenue between Fifth Avenue and Second Avenue. So this map hopefully shows kind of where we're, where the, the area of focus here. So for the next slide there, please, Corey. So the, the next slide, you kind of shows a more zoomed out version. And uh, when we got into this, this project originated, originally it, it's, it stems from uh, in 2017, the city uh, you know, completed a, a, a master plan, a transportation master plan of downtown called Connect Downtown. Uh, again, the focus of the city's uh, transportation master planning efforts is to make uh, improvements for our transportation network that provide uh, a safe network for all users, motorists, pedestrians, transit users, and bicyclists. So looking at all users here. And, and so this project does stem from that, those planning efforts uh, in terms of how do we improve, improve downtown. And, and Fifth Avenue was, 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 was prioritized. Uh, one, it's a vital connection. It's a north-south connection uh, right, right in the middle of our, our downtown. Uh, and also, uh, there was some development that's that's been occurring along Fifth Avenue that uh, that accelerated the need for for these improvements as well. And when we got into starting the planning of Fifth Avenue, uh, we realized there there was a disconnect uh, in the in the network. Uh, the city uh, recently improved uh, Cherry Street uh, to add, and specifically the bicycle network, uh, re recently improved Cherry Street, uh, uh, making that a much more uniform cross section. If you remember, Youth Cherry Street used to be um, yeah, kind of an obscure cross section where it went from a three lane roadway out the west end, then it went out to a four lane roadway. And then there was times where it was a four lane roadway, but then sections of parking were allowed during certain times of the day. And so, it, in, my, in my opinion, it was uh, fairly uh, could, could be confusing. And so, uh, the section was improved to provide a uniform uh, roadway cross section. And then also, gave us the opportunity to add uh, bicycle lanes and then uh, as well. And then uh, the city is also moving forward with improvements to uh, 12th Street uh, on the west uh, end of uh, toward the western side of downtown uh, where we will add uh, again improve that overall cross section to improve uh, uh, make a more uniform cross section and then also add bike lanes on that street uh, which will connect down to the Martin Luther King Jr. Parkway Trail. So if you think about it, uh, you know, there's, there'll be a, a bike network that stems from 12th Street uh, to from Martin Luther King Jr. Parkway Trail uh, to Cherry Street. Uh, and then we have the gap from Fifth Avenue to Grand. And then we have the on-street bike lanes, uh, buffered bike lanes on East Grand Avenue. So again, trying to build, build that network and, uh, for, for, for bicyclists here. So, so when we got into that planning, we recognize that gap and in, in, in Grand Avenue itself, uh, the stretch between, uh, specifically between third and fourth uh, has very, very narrow uh, pedestrian facilities, especially on the north side of the street. And uh, he, Corey's got a, a picture of that right up there and uh, uh, very narrow with, especially with even with the parking meters on there. And so this we saw as an opportunity to kind of extend the project limits uh, and, 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 and make this a complete improvement to, uh, that includes Grand Avenue between 5th and 3rd. And ultimately with Connect Downtown, uh, the plan is to, to convert the uh, Locust, uh, Grand Avenue and Locust Street one ways to a two-way two -way cross section. And so if you, if you recall, if you recall uh, Grand Avenue is already two-way uh, between 3rd and 2nd. And and, and and so this, we felt it was best to uh, to convert the, the next couple blocks and again need to chip away and tackle uh, the ultimate plan with Connect Downtown. Uh, so um, again this provides one opportunities for for complete uh, uh, connectivity there between Cherry and, and, and East Grand and, uh, and again it's also the goal of improving uh, the sidewalks in the area as well as use for transit and so I'm going to turn it over to Corey Bogenry, but he's going to go in more into what those improvements uh, are that are planned. Thanks, Steve. 
Um, again, my name is Corey Bogenreef, and I'm a principal traffic engineer with the city of Des Moines. And so I'm going to kind of walk through um, our planning process for um, Fifth Avenue and for Grand Avenue. And um, then I'll kind of get into the details of each. So we'll start with Fifth Avenue and uh, then we'll move on to Grand. So um, this slide just kind of shows um, our, our planning process and how we determine um, what a street looks like. And um, the, the city has a transportation master plan called Move DSM. And so for each project, we kind of go through um, this process that's outlined in Move DSM where um, you, know, you kind of start out and you look at, well, are there commercial nodes and what type of facility or routes does cross this street? So for Fifth Avenue, it's, it's on the bike network, but it is not on a transit network. There's, it's not on a truck route and it isn't an emergency vehicle response route. And so that kind of lays the foundation for how we um, lay out the cross section of the street. Um, the existing street is about 42 feet wide uh, from curb to curb um, and from building face to building face uh, or the right of way is about 66 feet. Uh, the ex existing speed limit is 25. We're not recommending to make any changes there. And the average daily traffic uh, pre-pandemic um, in 2016 was counted at just under 5,000. And so... Um, you'll see here this cross section on the top right is kind of existing what Fifth Avenue looks like. Now, this isn't an exact representation of Fifth Avenue because um, each block is a little bit different. And so what we're trying to do is, you know, do the one way to two way conversion, but also make it just more consistent and less confusing. So um, you currently have... Uh, eight foot parking on either side of the street. You have the, the, the bike lane, which is the one way south, um, and then the two 10 and a half foot travel lanes. So that's kind of what the existing street looks like. Um, through our planning efforts, um, the city has uh, determined to make some changes to that cross section to, to make it two way. And so those changes would include um, removing the parking on the, the west side of the street and um, installing a five foot bike lane with a two foot painted buffer, um, the two 10 foot travel lanes in either direction. Again, the, the five foot bike lane with the two foot buffer and then parking on the east side of the street and the, the curbs will remain. So the sidewalks will remain as is. So I'm gonna kind of walk through the details um, and this is uh, a planned view, so an overhead view of the corridor. And we're gonna start on the south end by Cherry Street, um, by the High V and the Polk County Courthouse. So just to orient you, um, north on this map is, is to the right. And so some of the uh, changes that we're proposing, um, number one is to these dark gray um, areas are uh, sidewalk curb bump outs. And we're proposing those for a couple of reasons. Um, number one, they help to define the parking lane. So um, they shadow the parking and really helps uh, folks to know that, okay, this is a parking lane and not a drive lane. The other thing they do, um, probably more importantly, is they reduce the, the width or the length that somebody has to, to cross the street. So it, um, you know, at, adds you know, about eight to 10 feet to where um, it narrows down that crossing and people aren't as exposed or walking out in the street um, for as far, um, it, just a little safer crossing. Um, one other thing that we're proposing is to include uh, the green paint for the bike lane. And this is something that was incorporated on the East Grand project. Um, and we're incorporating it this summer um, on the 12th Street project that Steve mentioned earlier. And um, you'll be seeing that uh, more throughout uh, the city of Des Moines. Um, another thing that we'll be doing in this stretch, there's this uh, median between or at Court Avenue on, 
on fifth that kind of directs people coming north on fifth onto court that will be removed so you can carry on straight through um, that intersection and continue on north. Um, as we move farther north, north of Mulberry Street, there'll be uh, about eight additional parking spaces added on the east side um, th through that block. And so kind of in this whole stretch uh, between Cherry and Walnut Street, there'll be about eight additional parking spaces. Um, I'm gonna move on uh, further north. And so this is showing um, Fifth Avenue between Walnut Street and Grand Avenue. And um, there's a little bit more going on here. So I'll, I'll try to explain um, just, uh, just generally, again, we're adding bump outs as mentioned um, further south. So there'll be bump outs at a, at a few locations. We'll also be adding the green paint. Um, the red symbols, those are showing um, some traffic signal modifications. So in order to allow traffic to, to move in all directions, uh, there's currently not traffic signals for that. And so we'll be making some, some changes and some upgrades to the traffic signals. Um, and uh, I'd like to go to talk about the Walnut Street intersection and, and the Locust Street intersection. And you'll see uh, this picture up here in the right shows Fifth Avenue looking north at Walnut Street. And so along the Capitol Square building, you kind of have this, um, uh, I'll call it an alley. It's kind of a, a strange section where you know it's a one-way street south but then you have this one block where it's, it allows you to go north and it, it's really I think it's confusing for drivers and it also creates this huge wide intersection and actually the pedestrian crossing for um, crossing fifth or crossing Walnut Street is actually back over off the page to the right um, and so it really creates this uncomfortable pedestrian um, uh, walkway. And then it, it gets really confusing for um, drivers. And so what we're proposing, you can see down here, um, is to ex kind of extend that sidewalk out and raise the sidewalk through this driveway. And so what that will do, it will kind of de-emphasize um, the, the driving part of this alley and, and make it feel more like a, an actual driveway instead of feeling like part of the street. And then that will emphasize and give the pedestrians the right of way. And that, that also allows us to pull the, the pedestrian crossing um, up to the intersection at, at a more natural location. Uh, we'll be doing that same thing at Locust Street to, to really uh, the, the benefit of, of people walking. Um, as we move for farther north, um, should note that on the west side, again, I mentioned we'd be removing parking. Uh, six parking spaces will be removed between Walnut Street and Locust Street. And then between Locust and Grand, eight will be removed on the west side, but we'll be adding five back on the east side and also um, proposing a new loading zone um, near the LC. Manor Apartments. And um, the, that will help with some of their curbside activity. Um, they also have a lot of on-call um, dart buses um, that frequent this area. So um, that's a spot for, for those either emergency response, uh, commercial or loading and unloading, and then um, for, for dart, uh, that on-call service to use that loading zone at the LC Manor Apartments. Um, Moving forward, I'll, I'll switch gears and kind of talk about Grand Avenue here. Um, so as I mentioned, um, this is kind of our process we use to determine the roadway cross section. And, and Grand is really kind of an important um, artery through downtown. You know, it's not only on, you know, the, the main commercial node, it, it's on a bike route. Um, it is a, a transit route. There's approximately 140 buses per day on Grand Avenue, um, that data came from, from DART. Um, it's, it's a truck route and it is also a emergency response route. And so um, you know, it's, it's a very vital corridor for downtown. Um, the, the street is a little bit wider, it's about 55 feet wide. 
existing speed limit is 25 and that's recommended to remain the same with an average daily traffic of about 11,000 vehicles. Um, and that's 11,000 vehicles just going west um, since Grand is a one way west in this area. And so here on the top right, you can see kind of what the existing conditions are on the, this would be the north side. There's uh, kind of a wide 10 foot parking area. You have three 10 foot travel lanes. The bike lane is um, on, on the south side and then another wide parking lane. And so uh, what we're proposing is kind of the typical cross section. We, the parking would remain on the north. Um, we'd be adding uh, a five foot bike lane with a three foot painted buffer. Um, we would have two uh, westbound travel lanes. And again, um, because we're going from uh, one way to two way on Grand, but we're not doing the same on Locust. There's just more traffic traveling west on Grand. So um, today we're proposing to have a, a 10 foot travel lane and then the middle lane would be an 11 foot travel lane. And, and that's a little wider uh, because in the future when Grand eventually, um, as Steve mentioned, the long-term goal is for the entire stretch of Grand to be two way. And that would happen at the same time that Locust Street um, would be converted to two-way. And so that middle lane would be at that time converted to, um, to house the left turn lanes uh, for both directions. And so um, this configuration allows us to have that set up for the future. So um, it's just a matter of, of restriping this lane as a, a two-way left turn lane. And then um, we don't have to jostle around the bike lanes or the parking lanes. Um, and then as we continue the south side of the street, again, we'd have that five foot bike lane with a three foot buffer. And again, the curbs will remain um, in the same location except for um, the stretch between third and fourth, which I'll talk about here in a second. So um, I'll just walk through again, uh, just to orient you, we'll start here on the west. Uh, north is relatively up on the page. So this is a, an, an overview of the, of the project. Again, we're adding bump outs um, at the intersections as well as the uh, green paint to increase the visibility of the bike lanes. Um, we'll also be, uh, um, for, for those bicyclists at third, there's currently a um, what we call a bike scramble phase. And it, it's kind of a, a little a push button that you would push and that allows the, the cyclist to go from the north side of the street to the south side where the bike lane moves. Well, um, we're proposing to move that to Fifth Avenue for a couple of reasons. Number one, there's just less traffic on Fifth Avenue. Um, and so it's a little more comfortable to make that movement. And then it also makes a lot more sense to have it here uh, where you have the north-south bike lane on Fifth Avenue is just a more natural location to make that crossing for those folks continuing on west with the bike lane. Um, again, the parking will remain between Fifth and Fourth. We won't be making any changes there. There'll be um, some modifications to the traffic signals. Um, the stretch between fourth and third, um, as Steve had mentioned, the, the sidewalk on the north side is, is very narrow and it, it's um, really un uncomfortable to walk. Uh, you only have about six feet from the building face to the existing curb and that includes the parking meters. So um, what we're proposing is to remove those, those nine spaces on the north side. And um, I, on the next slide, I, I'll kind of talk about where those will be um, be kind of reallocated. Uh, we'll also be removing seven parking spaces on the south side. Um, but I, I should note that the city does have a parking garage right there on the south side. So um, there, there's definitely options um, outside of the on-street parking in this area for, um, for the public to park. Um, one other thing I should mention is um, we've been working with DART and we're proposing to make some improvements to the bus stops. And so um, you'll see here at 4th Street, we're proposing this 
bus island where the bike lane kind of comes back behind the bike lane. Um, and we've, we've actually installed a few of these uh, recently um, up on University Avenue. Um, this picture down here in the bottom right is at University and 27th Street near Drake. And so there, there's a couple stops like that up there. And um, the, the reason why we are proposing these um, stops this way and bringing the bike lane behind um, is a, there's a couple of reasons. Number one, um, I, as I mentioned, there's about 140 buses per day on this stretch. So that's, that's a lot of buses and anybody riding a bike um, with a bus going through this, pulling the bike lane back behind the stop kind of uh, eliminates that conflict between the bus and the bike. Um, and so it, it allows the bicyclists to continue on through and go um, have a, that dedicated bike lane. Um, the bus um, then can just stop in its lane um, and people can get on and off right there at the stop. You know, you can kind of see it here. Um, you know, it's, it's really easy to get on and off. It in increases the, the efficiency of um, getting on and off the bus. Um, and it, it kind of eliminates the bus from having to either pull over to the curb um, to, or, um, and then having to merge back into traffic, it eliminates that. And then it also um, just eliminates the, the bus from driving into the bike lane. Um, and so um, we're proposing that here at fourth and you'll see on the next slide, we're proposing that um, at third as well. And so continuing on to the east, um, again, the, the, the two-way conversion and actually the stretch between Second and third is, is already two-way traffic, um, but uh, we're proposing the green paint and the bus island. In order to fit that bus island, we'll be removing one, one parking space on the north side there between third and second. Um, again, there'll be some traffic signal improvements and modifications um, at both the intersections of third and second. Um, and then we'll be adding some additional um, curb bump outs at Second Avenue. And so um, what these bump outs at Second Avenue allow us to do um, is number one, it allows us to dedicate that space for um, parking. Second Avenue currently has uh, four lanes, you know, going northbound. And so um, it, it's, it's way over capacity or there's enough capacity to remove that outside lane or that lane against the curb and reallocate that to parking. And so what that does is it allows us to kind of move that on-street parking in the area. And so actually, if you, if you count up all the spaces between fifth and, and um, grand for this project, it actually ends up uh, being a net zero for the on-street parking. Um, the other thing it does is if anybody has ever uh, traveled north on second and turned left onto Grand, it's there's a, a dual left turn lane, and when the you're in that outside lane or up against the curb, making that uh, turn is really difficult. Um, it, it's it's just a really abrupt, sharp turn, and so this allows us to just have one dedicated left turn lane, um, and it kind of makes that that turn, that left turn from second on to grand a little bit smoother. Um, so that's just kind of a general overview of both um, Fifth Avenue and Grand Avenue portion of the project. Um, I just wanna talk briefly about the project schedule and kind of the next steps. Um, next week uh, on May 11th, so next Tuesday, uh, this project will be presented at the Transportation Safety Committee. Um, and then after that, we'll be uh, moving into design. So um, we kind of like to wait to start that design till after we can have this public meeting. So if anything comes up or any um, thing needs to be modified or, or questions arise that, that we can answer those questions now. And it also gives the Transportation Safety Committee um, an opportunity to comment on the concept. Um, design will last through 
um, this fall. And um, we're planning to uh, bid this project for construction in November and um, hire a, a contractor to build the project. And then the construction would start um, tentatively in the spring um, of next year of 2022 and, and go through the end of the year. Um, with that, I just wanna mention as, as Steve said, this um, presentation is being recorded. And um, after um, we have the recording, uh, we will be creating a web page um, at our uh, city website, dsm.city. And um, so we'll have the presentation as well as some other um, documents and a recording um, to anyone who wants to come back and, and look at the concept or wants to re-listen to the presentation or anyone who isn't able to attend today uh, will have an opportunity to listen to that. And so um, here again, it's at dsm.city. This is the, the URL. It's pretty long. So um, usually what I tell folks is once you get to our webpage, it, um, up here at the, the top, there's this search bar. If you just type in projects and studies um, up in that box, uh, it'll take you right to this page. Um, so with that, I will open it up to questions. And again, um, as Steve mentioned at the beginning of the pro uh, presentation, if you wanna just go ahead and uh, raise your hand, use the raise your hand feature on Zoom um, by uh, clicking on the participant um, tab at the top and uh, we will call on you individually and uh, you can un unmute yourself and ask your question. All right, thank you, Corey. And I see uh, Jeff Angelo. Jeff, I'm going to ask you to unmute here. Yeah, thanks, guys. I, um, I'm very supportive of the project. I just had a question. Um, when you remove that median by 4th and Court High V, what's your plan there? Would that be a stoplight or a stop sign? What would be your plan for controlling traffic then at that intersection? Yeah, so um, we'll be removing that median and um, we'll actually be, um, there. there's this pedestrian crossing that continues on um, across Fifth. And I'm guessing that's what you're asking about. We're actually uh, proposing to remove that crossing there. Um, and the reason being is because uh, adding a, a traffic signal at court, there's just, it's way too close to, to Cherry Street and to Mulberry. And so, um, you know, just with the proximity of these two um, signals, we think it's, it's best to have people go to either, you know, if they're going along Cherry Street to actually, instead of just continuing on north on an uncontrolled crossing, you could take a left here and then go on Cherry Street to continue on west and um, the same way with if you're going on um, up to Mulberry, you would cross here at court and then you would have a, a dedicated um, controlled crossing to cross there. So that's kind of the plan. We're not only just removing the median, but we would uh, remove that pedestrian crossing and, and, and try to make people use the, the controlled crossings. Hey, thank you, Jeff. All right, I have uh, Laura Kessel. Laura, let's see if I can, oh, there you go. Yeah, I think I'm unmuted, hi. Uh, yeah, Laura Kessel, I am uh, both a citizen of Des Moines, but also I work at RDG on 3rd and Grand Avenue. Um, I wanted to share, first of all, absolutely in support of the project overall, happy to see all of the, the good improvements, including the narrower travel lane, pedestrian and bike accommodations and the two-way traffic conversion. The one point that I wanted to ask about um, here on the left side of the screen, Third Street coming south, it has two travel lanes that are right turn lanes um, turning onto Grand Avenue. And I know that's a little bit outside of the scope of this project, but it is something as people are coming off of the interstate of I-235 onto Third Street down that hill, uh, they go quite fast and that double traveling creates some blind spots. Seen a lot of near misses of pedestrians 
at that intersection. I'm curious um, you know, if that data on that intersection shows any particular injuries. Um, and if, as a part of this project, the city might consider changing that to just uh, a single turn lane onto Grand. Yeah, thanks, Laura. Um, yeah, we, to answer your question, we aren't planning on making any of those changes, changing that from, from a dual right. Um, based on just the, the volume of, of folks making that movement, and then with the, um, the dart stop up north, we, we weren't proposing on making that change now. Um, you know, I think in, in the future as Second Avenue and Third Street, um, you know, as Steve mentioned, you know, the plan for Connect Downtown is to eventually convert Grand and Locust to two-way. Well, um, the, the plan also recommends for, you know, all of the one ways to, to go from one way to two way. And so um, I think some of those changes would happen when third and second would be converted to two way and some of those, uh, you know, issues can be cleaned up. Thank you. All right, are there any other questions? I don't see any other hands up. Feel free to, to ask any questions. Um, and again, um, if, if there's no questions, you know, we don't have to um, hang out here till, till, the, till 6.30 when the meeting is scheduled to end. Um, we do have a couple. Um, first one I see is Kent. How are you doing? I'm Kent Sovereign with uh, H Friendly Greater Des Moines and, of course, a resident of Des Moines. Uh, really excited about the mobility uh, improvements and the safe streets improvements in this project. Uh, as, as, as bikers, pedestrians, for all modes of transportation. One of the uh, principal ways our volunteers hook into city site is through that, the Plan DSM. Move DSM um, uh, and uh, Live DSM hot link. So I'm wondering, as a, just a matter of ease of communication, if projects like these that uh, kind of go under the umbrella of Move DSM uh, could be hot linked uh, from that change as well, uh, it might, uh, uh, more people might find it. Just uh, a suggestion. Uh, other sure. than that, uh, keep on keeping on. We'll take a closer look at this. Uh, thanks very much for the public meeting. Yeah, thank you, Kent. Uh, that's a very good suggestion. Yeah, um, uh, I will. I will check with our IT and our communications folks. And um, yeah, I, I I realize sometimes you know uh, the sometimes the website can be hard to, to navigate. And so we, we obviously want as many people to be able to find the information um, that they want and need as easily as possible. So um, that's a very good suggestion, Kent, and we'll work to um, see if we can uh, to provide a link to some of those projects um, from those pages that you suggested. So thank you again, Kent. Um, the uh, next person who has a hand up, Carol. Do you want to unmute yourself there, Carol? I don't know if you're speaking or not. Sorry about that. Yeah, here I oh, am. Oh, no. Yeah, we can hear you. Um, as you know, I'm not a fan of scrambles. Um, so the proposed movement of the scramble, is it going to be signed and painted better than what it is today? Yes, yeah, and um, yeah, we plan to um, have it, try to have it signed better. Um, and then um, I think we're gonna 
plan to use some in pavement detection so it's um, a little more automated for cyclists, um, as well as you know, I think the the green paint um, will help to just just make it more more visible to folks. You know, it, we understand that you know that it's not the ideal um, way for for bikes to to get across, but um, until we can get Grand Avenue converted to, to two-way traffic the entire stretch through, um, you know, it, it's kind of our interim condition. So, um, but but yes, we we hope to in, improve that and make it a little bit easier for, for users to understand and use. Right, because you're not showing it right now, but on the slide that you showed the scramble, you had some green paint, this green paint. Is that actually going to be there? Um, yeah, that's a good point. Um, yes, that will be there, but there'll, there'll also be, um, you know, a, uh, a, a symbol for um, the, the bicycle detection to try to show um, cyclists where to, to wait to, to trigger that scramble phase. Yeah, um, I just think, you know, if I, you know, if I had wishes, it would be to keep the bikes on the right side because that's where bikes are expected. That's where bikes are expected by cars. That's where bikes are expected to go as a bicyclist. It's not intuitive to go all the way over to the left. And then with the project that's proposed with at, um, you know, at the Grand Meredith intersection where you have to scramble back across to the right, I think it's just, you know, way too much scrambling, but um, I have a question on the bus island where the bike goes inside the bus to the right of the bus. I guess that's Grand and Fourth. Mm -hmm. So does the bike lane travel on the outside of the bus and then move to the inside? Or can you help me understand what how that's going to work better because that sounds like a right hook to me as a bicyclist um if a bus or a car happens to turn right in front of me that's sort of not intuitive to how i would ride my bike yeah the i mean the bus the buses don't don't turn onto force so they continue on through um it's just to kind of eliminate that um, conflict of if a bus is stopped here, then the bicyclist can can continue on through. Um, the the bike lane is on the right side. You know, if, if there's a vehicle turning right, um, even if this bus island wasn't here, if it's similar to like uh, Fifth Avenue, if you can see my cursor here, um, you know, there there still is that obviously potential for those right turners, um, but. You know, I, I think it it helps not only with the getting on and off the bus and makes that just more efficient um, and safer for those folks, but it also, you know, like we said, it eliminates those bikes from, uh, you know, the bus pulling into the bike lane um, and, and just keeps those those two modes separate. Okay, so... The bike is always to the right of the bus whenever yes. it, whenever they're going. And this is just sort of like a, a, a detour right for the bike. And when it goes through the intersection, it's still going to be to the right of the bus? Yes. Have we asked bus drivers, you know, if they're expecting that or... Um, how that's handled on university today. Because again, that's not intuitive to me as a bicyclist to go to the right of a bus because it's because I might have people coming on and off the bus. Going inside of a bus is not good biking behavior um, for an on street bicyclist. Um, and, you know, that's just my observation on that. Um, but you know, if that's, that's how it's going to be. Um, 
Okay. Yeah, and and I, I mean, just to so yes, we we have talked. I don't know if we specifically talked to the bus drivers of, um, you know, what is your expectation, um, at these stops, but um, you know, from our conversations with Dart. Um, they do like these stops just for the simple fact that they don't have to pull pull over to the curb. Um, they're, they a lot of times have issues if they pull off out of traffic, they can't get back into traffic. And so um, this eliminates them having to do that. Or, um, you know, if the bus stop was, if there wasn't this island and the bus stop was back here, um, against the, you know, where the sidewalk is and the bus stop pulled over, um, then the bus stop is pulling over into the bike lane. And, you know, we're not inventing this bus island. This is um, something that um, is, is, is in NACTO. Um, you know, it's, right. um, it, we're, we're not the ones, uh, you know, we're not inventing the wheel here. We're using right. some of the, the best practices from other cities. Sure. What about putting the bus stop on the other side of the intersection? Uh, a far side stop. Yeah. Um, we, uh, through this process, we had met with DART um, on a, a couple occasions, and this is where they uh, preferred the bus stop. And so um, that's, that's, oh, that's w where we kept it. Now, this um, th this picture down here at the bottom is is doing what you described. It's it's on the far side of the intersection. Um, so, okay. Well, I'll ride through there to sort of see how it feels, so I can understand it a little better. I thank you for providing the real life example that's in use right now. Um, that's really great, and. Um, you know, I'm all for, thank you for the investments into bike infrastructure because it's good for all of us that bike and those those of us who want to bike. Um, and the commitment is really commendable. So thank you for that. And thank you for listening to those of us that are a pain in the you know what. Um, so thank you. Yes, thanks, Carol. Appreciate all the comments. Are there any other uh, questions or comments? Uh Corey, this is Carl Voss. I don't have a uh, raise your hand feature, so I'm uh, for whatever reason. Um, so, were you able to figure out how many Dart buses go on this section of Grand Avenue on a weekday? Yeah, um, according to Dart, it's about 140 buses. In a, a day? Uh, I believe so, yes. I mean, you have the, the D line, and then there, I believe there's three other lines that run uh, through this corridor on Grand. So if you look at uh, basically... Uh, even 12 hours of a day. Um, wow, that's... <laughs> there are plenty of people that have to wait a long time for a bus to come by. I'm, I'm startled to hear that, actually. But, but if that's what they um, say, I guess we'll have to go with that. Um, if you have to wait 20 minutes on a bus... For, for a bus, I, 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 I guess I'm too slow to figure out <laughs> how the math works out on that. Okay. Yeah, and, and again, we're just, you know, that's, that's the information that, that Dart's provided us. So okay. um, uh, if you want us to ask some more questions or have anything specific, uh, we'd be happy to reach out to Dart um, with those questions. Now, now, I'll just go ahead and ask myself for my own curiosity. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Carl.
or actually, yeah, yeah, you, know, you know, Josh is on this call and he has better contacts uh, than I do. So, Josh, if if you have a chance to ask, um, just a clarification on the number of uh, buses on Grand Avenue, I'd appreciate knowing. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, it looks like uh, Alec has Alec Davis has his hand raised. Yeah, thanks. I hope you can hear me. Um, and I apologize if I missed this. I was signed on and then I had to run away uh, due to a, a dog that escaped but is back. Um, well, I was just curious, what's this is somewhat related? What's the reasoning for maintaining um, the bike lane on the left going west of this project? Uh, I know someone was talking about it earlier. And if you said I missed it, but I'm just curious what that was. Yeah, um, I will give my um, my guess, and maybe if somebody who's been um, or maybe has a little more history, uh, any other city staff can can chime in when I'm done. But um, my understanding is that it was um, moved to that to the south side um, to avoid the conflicts with buses, um, with all the bus stops through the corridor. Um, that's my understanding of why it is on the south side. Um, now, would, you know, is that ideally where we would want it if we, you know, had a clean slate? Um, no, we, we probably would do things differently, but, um, you know, we, we only have so much funding um, and we don't have funding to, you know, make those changes today because it would re it would require us to, you know, completely shift everything from Fifth Avenue all the way west through downtown. So um, that that currently isn't budgeted. Um, you know, uh, again, if we had a clean slate, we wouldn't do that. But that's my understanding. I don't know if anybody else has anything to add or if I missed anything. Well, that's, that's always been my understanding as well, is that on, it was moved to that side, and I don't apologize, I don't know how many, how many years ago, but uh, to avoid the, bu the conflicts with the buses. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that just helps provide some context. Okay, well, um, if there's no other questions, again, uh, we appreciate everyone um, taking the time to, to join us online. Um, and again, there'll be a, a, a copy of the presentation and the recording of the presentation probably later this week. Um, we can get all those um, things together and put up on the webpage. Um, again, I'll go back to that slide. Um, of where the web page is. Uh, again, just go to the dsm.city and type in projects and studies in the, the blue box at the top, and that should take you right to the, the project page. So um, again, thank you for, for joining us. And um, if you have any questions, please, uh, please reach out. So have a good night. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.